Great, nice, nice to be here today. Um, I missed the earlier uh, part of the, of the conference. I was over in College Park actually at our Center of Excellence meeting and I heard that there was a, uh, a question of how many veterinarians were in the audience and only my colleague Alda Perez uh, raised her hand, so here's your second one. Um, <laughs> I also a PhD in microbiology, so a lot of going to school. And um, uh, something else about my background is that I spent the first half of my career as an epidemiologist in state and local public health. And in that capacity, I, I worked on outbreak investigations uh, in the uh, California Food Emergency Response Team, uh, food and drug branch, and worked as a public health veterinarian. And then I moved over after my PhD that I got later. and. Um, wanted to uh, uh, look at the applied research questions that come out of the surveillance and outbreak investigations at the public health level. And uh, we had the uh, a very uh, a public outbreak linked to uh, baby spinach in 2006 that, that uh, Dr. Milner mentioned. And at that time, I was on the team that was deployed for the, the farm investigation. And uh, based on, on the on the findings that we had from that investigation, as well as some other outbreaks that had led up to the, that large outbreak, uh, it was uh, funding went into through SIFSAN to create a center of excellence, and uh, that uh, opened in 2008. And I currently manage the Western Center for Food Safety, and we're having a concurrent meeting over in a, in the other city, <laughs> so I'm jumping from place to place, and. Um, you know, really what our center does is we work closely with SIFSAN and as well as uh, other uh, uh, local and state governments uh, to uh, bring up the research questions uh, and our focus is, and from the lessons learned from these outbreak investigations. What do we need to research? And so in these few slides, I'm gonna go through some of what we've been looking at uh, in California, but also uh, expanding out to uh, multi-regional uh, studies. The um, uh, one of our uh, findings that uh, uh, in a number of these produce-related outbreaks that, that were traced to the farm level, uh, pre-harvest or harvest level, rather than a food handler um, or further down the, the supply chain, um, is that a number of these are what we call zoonotic enteric pathogens. In other words, they, they're bacteria, parasites that come from animals. And uh, Callie's gonna follow on talking about viruses, which is a little bit of a different story. But for E. coli 0157, uh, Salmonella, Cryptosporidium, uh, and uh, uh, to some extent Listeria, although that's more of an environmental, many of these uh, pathogens are actually coming from domesticated and wild animals. And most of these pathogens don't make the animals sick. And it doesn't matter if they're grass-fed or grain-fed, uh, these are now pathogens that, that are just net part of their natural flora in most cases. And uh, so it's a little different than when we, you know, in, in veterinary medicine, uh, you know, in the uh, last century where we worried a lot about uh, brucella or tuberculosis or, or diseases that could make the animals sick. This is a whole different paradigm. Uh, where you have grazing animals or feedlots that are juxtaposed uh, in proximity to produce fields and uh, as well as wildlife corridors. And uh, we do a lot of work out west, and I'm sure you do back here, working with NRCS and trying to promote wildlife habitat um, on our uh, agricultural farmscapes. Um, but unfortunately, we ha what we have found is that um, in some cases, uh, we have run into food safety conflicts in that these animals can be shedding pathogens, especially where, when they're in large numbers, large density, like a large CAFO, or uh, large populations of birds or, or feral swine coming through these fields can, can actually cause a contamination event. So a lot of um, the research that's been uh, being funded uh, over this last 10 years at Western Center has looked at these different sources and, and how can, you know, our main concern is how does the produce uh, get contaminated? But you have to back up and look at uh, the whole entire system from a One Health point of view and uh, the soil being, you know, very important too. And in some situations where we've done uh, multi-year studies on commercial farms looking at soil, water, wildlife, domesticated animals, bioaerosols, 
uh, it, soil can actually be a good indicator that, that there uh, is fecal contamination. Uh, pathogens on produce farms are actually extremely rare. So we, we had a study in the Salinas Valley area, over 3,000 paired uh, soil and uh, leafy green samples were collected over two years. We found zero E. coli 0157 on any of the of the, the leafy greens, and it was right in the area where we had had a history of outbreaks. However, we did find positives in the soil for stack and, and 0157, and in the uh, surface water sources as well as animals and uh, uh, in terms of uh, bioaerosols, uh, we rarely find the pathogens, but that may be a, techno a technology issue. We've actually started, we have some data coming out uh, where we had tree nut farms that were in close proximity to uh, CAFOs, like large dairy operations or poultry houses, and we measured uh, a gradient of dust moving from those operations into the produce fields using aerosol samplers, and we found nothing in terms of trying to isolate a single bacteria like E. coli or a, or a stack or a salmonella. But when we went into metagenomics, we found really interesting findings where the dominant uh, family of bacteria was a, 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 pol a poultry-related uh, family of bacteria. And so um, what's being talked about uh, in terms of the technology is having these uh, other abilities with, with uh, next generation sequencing and, and uh, to identify other markers in these farm studies than the way we've always done it. So in, in terms of what we have so far, and Pat shows some of the data, um, we have looked at prevalence and levels of pathogens uh, that are uh, actually in raw manures, and uh, we're, we're working on writing up uh, these studies. Uh, we've also looked at animal, uh, animal intrusions and, you know, what are the background levels in domesticated and, and wild animals, uh, uh, which is another way that, um, that uh, you can introduce uh, these zoonotic pathogens into the soil and ultimately contaminate the, uh, the, the food supply. Um, and, you know, once we have some of that background, and, uh, and we've done most of this out, out, out in the West because that's where a uh, number of these um, outbreaks have been traced to uh, that, that were related potentially to a, a domesticated animal or wildlife source, uh, you know, then we can start looking at interventions and interventions that, that uh, balance conservation and wildlife habitat and being able to uh, coexist with our, our animal agriculture and our plant agriculture. We, we call it co-management and it's the ultimate goal, and, but a lot of this research has only been done out west, and so there's huge knowledge gaps across the country. Cornell has added to the data, but um, it's still a need. And uh, it's already been mentioned about the, this issue of wait periods. Again, this goes back to raw manure, especially animal manure, and uh, these, the, some of the conflicting uh, approaches that are currently being done uh, related to waiting periods. So the, the NOP has the 91, 20 days. Uh, it was mentioned that we have a leafy green marketing agreement out in Arizona and California. That's uh, industry driven, it's not regulatory, um, but they actually make a one year waiting period for raw manure application for leafy greens, which is essentially a ban, because um, that would not fit into crop cycles. Um, we don't know what the ultimate answer is. Another question that has come up, um, actually at the uh, meeting I was at earlier this morning, uh, this was human manure, but there was a sewage spill and uh, the, uh, uh, on a strawberry field surrounded by romaine lettuce, and the question was, um, how, when, when, can we, when is it safe to farm that land again? And it was in Monterey County, which is a very sensitive area where we've had outbreaks before, and this was human sewage, so it might be more of an issue of of uh, concern about viruses, but that, that is a question. And after the 2006 incident, that grower actually waited three years before using that particular field that was implicated in that outbreak. So to finish up the, um, the you know, what we're overall looking to do in, in research that relates to these zoonotic uh, bacterial or parasitic uh, uh, pathogens is, is uh, to ultimately reduce uh, the incidence of fresh produce related human illnesses uh, from the pre-harvest contamination of soil, and uh, uh, this being a soil health conference, but in the context of the entire environment that, that, is, uh, that is the production environment. 
and uh, uh, you know to uh, as I mentioned, this needs to be multi-regional, um, needs to be multi-year. Uh, some of the life scientists that we might want on the team would be agronomists, horticultural experts, epidemiologists, microbiologists, and so on. I didn't put it here, but we also need to include economists, uh, social sciences, and uh, uh, other, um, other professionals that, uh, that were mentioned in the first talk with, with the uh, 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 working with communities and, and the diverse uh, stakeholders that would be involved here. Um, I went big on the estimate, five years, 10 million, um, but um, that said, I, I, I put that there because I'm in academia now, and so I know the moment you get the money, 50% of it gets taken away. <laughs> And then you start dividing it between five different locations and you're down to a little tiny study. So that's how it gets really expensive, but I wouldn't discourage still looking at smaller funding sources um, from commodity boards, Center for Produce Safety, uh, you know, shorter two-year studies, even intramural funds, just to get something going to try to get one of these larger uh, grants. So thank you.